Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for joining us for our first uh, webinar in our VIP webinar series. You know, we really went out of our way this time around to invite our our Think friends, Think customers, to come on and learn more about Tele and their text messaging uh, solutions. And why don't I invite you too to the other uh, uh, items that are in this list here that we're also going to be presenting on next week. The first is invited all of our Tele folks to learn more about the Think Voice products. That's next Thursday. Next Friday is uh, what you need to know about how Tele and Think, as we come together, are supporting the stir, uh, stir shaken. You know, to help combat uh, robocalls, sign calls, learn exactly what we're doing and how we're doing it. So uh, definitely want to tune in for that one. And last but not least, uh, right after we get back from our July 4th break together, we'll be diving into how Tele and Things APIs as they come together, the things that you can build with those APIs, the capabilities that are available. The easiest way to register, guys, head over to Think, think.com, go to the blog, and it'll, you'll see the very first post with all the, you know, the listings of what's in those items, and then you can click the register link. And, and like I always say, like a broken record. If you can't attend live, that's fine, but just make sure that you register and I will send you a link uh, to the the uh, recorded webinar uh, very soon after it ends. So with that, um, great to see everybody here. Again, everybody's on time. We can get started. Today, we're really going to lean into uh, tele-messaging. And as I mentioned, what we're really excited about is very recently, you know, Think acquired tele. And uh, one of the things, obviously, the main reason we did that was for a lot of the different things that Telly does so well. One of them is, you know, SMS and MMS. And we've actually been using, and Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like we've been working together, I think, since 2017. And, uh, very closely, you know, you guys were, you know, the power behind our SMS, MMS uh, solution. And there's even more that comes along with it, which is why I'm so excited to, uh, to be with you guys today to, to present that to everybody. Uh, and again, uh, we've got Brian Ford here, the SVP of Product uh, and Messaging. Brian, thanks for joining us. You've got it. Thanks, Tim. Yeah. Very and, exciting. Yeah. And Scott over on the expansion side of our business. Scott, welcome. Thank you. Happy there. to be here. There he is. Thanks, <clears> guys. <throat> and I'm Tim McLean, Director of Marketing. Uh, those of you on this webinar are probably sick of seeing my face, so it's good to see some new faces as well and lots of really good things to talk about. The first thing I'd love to start with is a quick poll. And let me go ahead and get that started here. We really want to get a sense for who's on the call, where you are in terms of you know your interest in, your current usage of text messaging. Let me go ahead and launch this poll. So go ahead and vote there. So the question is, are you using text messaging today in, in your solutions, in your business? So is, hey, I'm doing it now. I'm planning to do it pretty soon, or, you know, it's a little farther away. So I'll give you guys a couple minutes here to, uh, to vote. Wow, you guys are fast. We're about mm -hmm. halfway done. So it looks like guys, uh, just, to, just to put it into perspective. So we've got about 55% of the folks on the call um, are doing it as we speak. Uh, 15 of them are planning to do it pretty soon from one to six months out. And then we've only got two folks that are going to do it way into the future. So that's good to know. Appreciate that, guys. That was, that was a pretty good participation there. 90% voting. That's pretty good. So as I just mentioned, really excited that Think has acquired Tele. We're just in the early stages of it. I know a lot of you on both sides of the fence, if you're a current customer of Think and or Tele, you've heard in the last just few weeks that this has happened and really just want to be clear that, you know, for the moment, obviously Think continues to be Think and Tele continues to be Tele. And behind the scenes, we're starting sort of that integration process and, you know, a lot of water under the bridge to come in the future. A lot of exciting new things that we'll be able to do together. But in the meantime, there's no changes to your existing setup. Uh, it's business as usual. You don't have to do any reprogramming of any time of any kind. I think the only change we've asked you guys to do is where you, you know, send your payments, which is standard practice as the businesses come together. But really, you know, what we're most excited about is the fact that, you know, it really does give us, you know, even more powerful combined APIs uh, and our platforms as they come together. I uh, will also, you know, some great synergies and some new alignment for the businesses and what we're focusing on, which is very exciting. And just like you've been uh, you know, used to getting from us, you know, total control and transparency, you know, the deep redundancy that you've come to really love, uh, you know, on the voice side, and of course, all the new things coming from messaging, and the automatic cost savings. So just want to allay anybody's fears that there's any changes in the short term, there isn't. It's just in the meantime, we're going to just continue to operate as Think and Tele, and eventually have some exciting things to share as the summer sort of comes and goes, as we start to combine ourselves together. Don't want to jump too far ahead, but uh, there are exciting days ahead. But that's, this is where we are for the time being. 
And, you know, today, again, if you look at sort of the whole range of things that, uh, that Think and Tilly have to offer all around the horn, um, we're going to focus really on, you know, the bottom part here on the messaging piece. But I know, Scott, exciting that, that uh, this Channel Vision uh, Award came through today for you guys on the Tilly side. Tell us more about that. Yeah, we're really excited about it. Um, it's about our programmable web APIs. And so, uh, of course, we have that webinar scheduled later on. I think in July, but uh, we right. are excited that we, we got top innovator award for our, our VoIP APIs, which includes the, the full messaging stack, uh, voice, fax, and quite a few other features. There's over 200, I think there's 230 API features that are part of that uh, Tele API and uh, it's super, super easy to integrate. So anybody that's uh, you know been using Twilio, um, this is a fantastic alternative to that. Uh, very, very similar, uses the same back end. Uh, but we'll get into that later. But yeah, we're excited about that one. Thanks for yeah. putting that up there, Tim. Congrats, guys. Yeah, really uh, you know, appreciate your leadership there and all the different features. I can't wait to share those in July because I still have to dig in and learn all the exciting new things you guys get to do, which is exciting for me and for our customers too. <clears throat> so we thought it'd be helpful, guys, to start with three really quick success story examples of, you know, what are people doing with, you know, the tele-messaging uh, platform and APIs? And the first thing is, um, you know, is a company that specializes in school to parent notification. And this, of course, was super used during, you know, the COVID-19, you know, days and months uh, where they had to get, you know, important announcements out to, you know, to parents uh, over text. So the reason that they kind of came over and started to use our solution was that, um, first of all, it was not a very uh, heavy dev lift to get it up and running. And really what they wanted to be able to do was scale their SMS transmission uh, using these daisy chain toll-free numbers, which is one way that we can deliver more messages more quickly at higher volumes. And um, the company that was doing this also, you know, they weren't getting good reporting from, from a delivery detail perspective. They wanted to see, you know, what the throughput looked like. They were not getting great support. And, uh, and again, really, it was a very easy transition for them. So I think this is one great example of, you know, a notification company who, who has been using the solution uh, and for the reasons that they, that they did it. And Scott, tell us a little bit more here too. I know we, you guys have on your side a property management company that, um, that you know, provided tenants with text-enabled numbers to do a couple things to help serve their clients. Um, yeah, I mean, this is fantastic for anybody in the property management space. Um, you know, text messaging, as we all know, is really becoming the, I guess, the, the, the chosen mechanism for people to communicate. So it's a way for people to, uh, to get service out at their, at their units to um, you know, provide documentation that could be either as a simple text, hey, I need a service call, or I can send you a picture of the actual, um, you know, actual failure in the appliance, those type of things. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been fantastic. It definitely allows them to scale uh, substantially more for larger properties than you know, you know, having a, you know, one or two operators in the, the main management office to, to field those inbound calls. So um, yeah, that's it's, right. It's, been really fantastic one. Yeah, and I know in this case too, obviously they use some of the more basic usages of texting to, you know, do two-factor authentication for, for the apps for the property management company and mm -hmm. password resets. That's standard, standard stuff, but still a lot of traffic uh, for those kinds of things as well. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. And another one too, and by the way, I have, I have an exact st story that this exactly happened with my wife. Um, she was out driving, she was stopped at a red light and she got rear-ended by a gentleman who was towing a really big boat and smashed up the back of our minivan. And before the cops even got there, she was already on her smartphone taking pictures and texting them up. You know, she was on the phone sharing the insurance information. So that's exactly mm -hmm. what this insurance company was doing. This is a different insurance company, uh, but it's basically the same idea that they had a contact center with toll-free and those toll-free numbers accept both voice and messaging traffic, right? So they can do things mm -hmm. like send accident photos, um, and, you know, provide other documentation. And really it's all about, right, Scott, it's about this omni-channel communication that everybody wants to provide. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So just a couple of great examples of how you can put, uh, you know, put us to work for your, for your SMS and MMS needs. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Brian. And we're just going to go ahead and step through the basics of, of what the product is, how it works and all the different things it can do. Take it away, Brian. Yeah. So kind of uh, like those examples that were just shared, <clears throat> what really kind of sets us apart, and, and I want to, you know, start this with, there's a reason why we asked that question at the beginning, um, you know, who's using it, who's thinking of using it, to kind of plant that seed, to, to get you guys to think about how, how you are going to use it and how you are using it. I like to think of us really as a, um, a platform to hit your wagon up to. We're a platform enablement company. 
And there's, there's other companies out there that do this, but it would be, it's interesting to think that there's a one size fits all solution that, that exists when each one of your companies and your customers and your customers' customers are unique and have different nuances to them and um, have different needs. And that's where we really shine is our ability to create that process. I was actually thinking about this a little bit earlier. It's kind of like a Lego set. You have the newer ones. And there are some people that might say, you know what, all I need to do is deliver a message. All I need to do is, you know, send and receive. But, you know, if your business is more nuanced, has more pieces built into that, <clears throat> that's what we're doing. So we're, we're building out those APIs. We're always adding new API calls, um, engaging. And if you, you can even go to the next slide here real quick. We can go back to this enablement. But the way we want to connect to you through XMPP, SMS, if you want to create a Jabber client, um, all those different tools that we have are there. Now, our biggest tool is our maneuverability, the ability that we have to integrate and to customize your needs. And I think we, we ask, we, we start with the end in mind. What are you trying to accomplish, right? Because as a platform enablement service, we understand that there's hundreds of platforms out there for all that uniqueness that exists out in the ecosystem. So um, that's, I think, our biggest tool set is our ability to be an extension of your team when developing these nuances in, uh, for your business. Uh, yeah, I'd like to add to that, if you don't mind, Brian. I mean, that, that's a fantastic yeah. point. I think that's one of the the big reasons why a lot of people migrate from someone like Twilio to Tele is um, it's, it's basically the same, you know, technically it's almost the same um, experience with the APIs, the backend carrier network and infrastructure uh, is identical, um, if not better. But the thing that we do that really um, our customers say that really differentiates us from someone like Twilio is what Brian's describing. We work with you and your development team to make sure that you know the, the features and functions you're trying to build into your application, um, you know, are you know, are functional, and that if you have any special requirements, right, we'll work with you on that um, to, to achieve that. Versus that, you know, you know, one size fits uh, if it's a few type of mentality. The so the one size fits most kind of. Oh, is it most? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, one size fits most, and <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> you know. Not in my experience, you know, so some of this stuff takes a little bit more work. Um, you can go back real quick to that other slide. I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, um, sure, blaze over the, the hosted SMS. That's a really big tool that we have on our side is the ability to enable messaging for any number, you know, like for, you know, for most numbers that are out there, in, you know, we can enable SMS on that. So say you have a legacy customer that's, you know, on an old PBX, it's routing through an old PTS, you know, uh, the POTS line, right? PSTN line. Well, can we message enable that number? Um, uh -huh. Well, it, you know, might take some, you know, porting and getting some stuff done, but we can usually figure it out. And in most cases, we don't have to do anything like port numbers and move things around. We can just enable things where they're at, business as usual. And you think about this last year that we've lived in storefronts were kind of gone. You know, there's a lot of businesses that um, operate with a storefront. Well, your phone number in a way is kind of your storefront now when you're messaging people. So that's a, a unique application that you can kind of use um, and bring to a customer um, out there in the, and as a real world scenario. Great. So, yeah, makes sense. So if we step through here, Brian, I know. So these are kind of like the three sort of top level ways that most people, you know, are setting up their texting, right? Right. So there's different ways that you can communicate through SMS, right? The first one is short code that we have listed there, five to six digit number. And what's unique about short code is it really does allow you to do high velocity. The vetting process is, you know, it takes a little bit longer. It's not in an immediate turn up. And you're going to do a lot of your, your, your bank notifications, 2FA, OTP, a lot of that stuff that's going to be vetted and it's going to have that higher rate of pass through. It doesn't get spam filtered because it's been vetted traffic, right? It's a, if, if anyone here has gone through the, long, the short code process, it's a bit of a process to get on board. But once it's on board, 
nothing beats it for deliverability and, and for uh, velocity. Yeah, and then for toll free, I know a lot of, a lot of our, our Think customers really used you know number of toll free numbers that are daisy chained together to also help with the volume, right? Sure, and and that's a, a different application as well. Toll free and 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 long code, um, they're pretty similar in a lot of ways. What I see toll free more, and you will see it in business applications, more support style, um, some of the higher pass through. Um, Ten DLC. Stands for 10 digit long code. It's really the your, your everyday phone number, right? What I was just talking about. And so that's again, that's the, the power of enabling all numbers, even the off net numbers, to be able to have messaging on their platform. Again, I go to a local environment, like it says right there. A lot of people these days will actually, and I don't know if you guys do this, I code them into my phone. So I actually, if there's a local business that I, that I frequently call or talk to, I program them into my phone to where I'm not always having to look for a number. Mm -hmm. um, so that gives you that more localized personal experience to someone that's, you know, in your neck of the woods where you're trying to do something more intimate, I think, to the, uh, to the, uh, to the customer base there. Gotcha. That's great. And I think you guys have a great breakdown of sort of all the sort of features and functionality and pluses and minuses of each of those different flavors right on your website right here, right? Right. And as you look at the differentiators there, you know, the short code where it's kind of limited is that, you know, it doesn't get spam or it's not limited is that spam filtering where it is limited is in you can't call it, right? That's right. How many times have you wanted to call someone you're sitting on hold forever and you just wish you could text the person, <laughs> Right. Okay. That, that happens all the time. And that even happens now. If, if you look at a lot of programmable voice and IVRs, it'll say, hey, do you want us to call you back or text you when, when a line gets available, right? So it really rounds out the ability to communicate with your customer. And that's what messaging really does. Something I want to really emphasize is what we want to do is allow you to communicate with your customer the way your, communi your customer communicates with you. And that's pretty important because everyone communicates in a different way. Uh, you know, messaging definitely is getting a lot more popular. But I think the last poll, I think Scott can correct me if I'm wrong, but 78% of people said they wish they could text their business, a, a business. And so in fact, the, the most recent data I've seen, it's as high as 85% of the consumers are out there are already um, trying to engage with a, a business um, through text messaging. So um, it's, it, it was 78 a, a year or two ago, and it's just continuing to climb. So, um, so yeah, that importance is there where people are looking to communicate with businesses in other methods. Yeah. I will say this too, if, if my son's any indication, he's about to turn 20, he's in college and he never wants to make another phone call. If he can help it, he'd rather text everything every time doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> so yeah, definitely yeah. the up and coming next generation yeah. is very yeah. invested in texting. Yeah. You look at, you look at the way things are now. I mean, you can, you go home and you order your groceries on, on an app and you, you order your, your dinner on an app and they communicate back with you via text message. And you don't have to see anyone or talk to anyone. Your stuff magically appears on your doorstep. <laughs> right. Um, and, and that's happening with a lot of services. I've seen car services, uh, uh, mechanics that now go out to homes and work on cars mm -hmm. and communicate via text. And then it's just through an app now and right. Hey, come fix my brakes. Okay. I'm going to show up. Brakes right. are fixed. I'm going to pay you through the app or whatever it is. And I mean, it's, it's Make it easy. Then, is it Tim? Can I add one thing? I'm going to you know, step back to what Brian was talking about. And I think this is, this is pretty big. So we talk about 85% of the consumers out there are trying to communicate with a business or do business with a company through text messaging. But what about the 15% of those, um, you know, who, who aren't right. And I think that's where that, if you look at the total, you know, retail consumer base, 15% is a really big number. And um, as you know, within a couple of years, we're going to be as high as probably 90, 95%. And so for the companies that ha are not enabling their, their main, numbers, their local number and their toll-free numbers to receive text messages and to communicate with those customers, they potentially are losing money 
there's some studies out there and, and we've actually been promoting this quite a bit. People will be shocked to find out how many consumers or customers have been trying to actually communicate or order from them through their main numbers that are not text enabled. That's right. So when we talk about the off net number um, support, the cool thing about it is if you have a, you know, if you are a business or you have customers that are a business and, you know, you can basically text enable their numbers without them having a port from their current carrier. Very, very easy process. Just a, an LOA and some, you know, I think it's a web form that you can fill out. And before you know it, and of course that those can be integrated into Slack or all the different mechanisms, we can send those text messages to them uh, or forward right. them. So, um, mm -hmm. but you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's shocking to find out how many people have actually been trying to text you on your main number for your business <laughs> when, you, yeah. when you don't have a text enabled. It's, uh, I've seen those looks on people's faces when they see that, that data. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and I'll Can speak you, in, in the auto industry as well. Uh, local dealerships who are only starting to turn that on now and they're shocked at how many messages are, have been sitting there. People have been trying yeah. to reach them and they haven't been right. able to. But what do they do? What do the consumer do if they can't reach you? Right? <laughs> I'll go to your competitor. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> right. Exactly right. right. We live in a world where it's, it's like Amazon, right? Three clicks and you've got yeah. something shipped to you. And um, I think that's the kind of mentality, right? So if you don't have messaging supported on your numbers, Right. Um, if they can't communicate with you, they'll just go to the next one that they saw on Google or they'll yeah. go to the one that they see next door to you. So I was going to say too, just to double down on that. So I've seen research in both sort of the home goods space and the automotive space that the, it was about 15 years ago, the average number of stores a consumer would visit before they would buy was six. And now it's 1.4. And that's the only reason is if they don't go to the first one and get what they need, they're only going to go to one other place. So mm -hmm. you got, you have one shot to make a good impression and connect and, and close yep. that sale. Otherwise they're, you know, they're gone. So interesting, yep. interesting, great, great capability. Yeah. And those are those little nuances that kind of exist where, you know, say I, you need an application that you need to build and you're, it's going to a Jabber client or it's, where is it being delivered? Like, that's the question. Where is it being delivered? And, and, you know, everyone's different. There's a lot of people out there that have, you know, engineers in-house, coders in-house that are going to build up, you know, their platform the way they want to. But uh, again, that's where we become the extension when, when things get more nuanced. There was a, one the other day where someone asked if we could generate a, uh, an email every time a, a, a text was received or, or when yep. it went out, right? And it's... sure. Yeah. Can we do that? Sure. Absolutely. No problem. How do like, we're, we're a communications platform. What do you need us to do? Right. Uh, so sometimes it's, do we have to engage voice with the SMS? Do we have to engage email with the SMS? What can we do? Right. Yep. So absolutely. So uh, I, I, in, in the interest of time here, so we've only have three slides left and we're going to open up to questions. So I thought we'd just take a second, you know, if we could just talk, Brian, a little bit more about, and this is new to our Think customers in particular, having the availability of short codes, right? Just kind of right. another high level overview of that. So a short code, like it, like you said, it shows there, it's a five to six digit code mm -hmm. that comes through and it gets registered and there's an onboarding process. And there's some, you know, caveats to having that, you know, you have to be able to if someone says stop, like it shows you, you have to, you know, hit, you have to stop the message. You have to reply to things like help. But once you get that done, it really opens up that capacity for a high velocity messaging to your consumer. It's vetted. It's not going through that, that spam filtering process. And it's, again, it's, you know, I think eight to 12 weeks to really onboard that. And there's right. some setup fees that go along with that. It used to be to where you could share a short code for different campaigns. Mm -hmm. They've kind of gotten away from that. But if you're looking at doing high velocity um, messaging, definitely the way to go. Gotcha. And same thing with 10 DLC. I know there's some nuances in here as well. Yeah, we, we could uh, we could probably make a, a boot camp <laughs> out, out of out of everything that's going on in the industry yeah. with with uh, with messaging on the long code side. So what's going on now is they're starting to have the campaign registry, mm -hmm. which is basically the 10 DLC version of the vetting that short code goes into. It gets scrutinized a little bit. So you have to go in and you will register your brand. And then once you register your brand, you have to register campaigns. And based on the type of campaign you're getting, it will be uh, assigned to a specific vertical within the campaign registry that will dictate the um, surcharges to the vertical. And 
it's a it's a pretty big undertaking, you know, industry wide. It's a very a big thing that's going on. Um, so they're going to ch- test, you know, check things when you're onboarding. Like, okay, are they providing an EIN, and is that EIN match the address that they have listed, you know, you know, with the government to say, hey, this is where this business resides. It looks at all these different uh, public fields to say, hey, what kind of trust score can we really give this company? And those trust scores can actually dictate your velocity and pass through and daily um, volumes into the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you might see the difference between that short code and the long code. Uh, Really, this is a we, we always try to stress that people need to, you know, use best efforts. I don't know if people here are familiar with uh, the CTIA guidelines and the TCPA guidelines, um, but in the CTIA guidelines, there's a specific area, section 5.1, that we always try to make sure people get familiar with as they enter into this space. It's, you know, the, the screws have been tightened, but... In a, but also at the same time, it's going to enable 10 DLC or the 10 digit long code to actually be more productive once it's vetted. So people that are out there that are um, bringing on customers that might be very hesitant to try to register, sometimes that might be a red flag to go and vet some of the, uh, you know, some of the stuff going on because the ecosystem is pretty delicate. And you want to make sure that as you're signing people up and, and bringing customers on that we all are good actors in this space because it only helps deliverability. It helps with um, keeping the network active at all times. So the, a, a pretty complicated thing I would, I would really kind of suggest to anyone on the call that's interested into, uh, in, in doing uh, 10 DLC and, and to use a long code to spend the time to get familiar with that stuff and, uh, it's going to help everyone at the end of the day, you know. If you're not uh, sure about this, I mean, seriously, that's one of the things that I think, you know, Telly brings to it is we have really extensive knowledge on 10 DLC on CTIA and TCPA. So if you're not really sure, you can reach out to your account manager, uh, open a support ticket. Um, you know, um, we can always <laughs> connect to us, you know, multiple different ways and we can have discussions on, on really what that looks like and really make sure that you understand what you can and cannot do. Yeah, and last, of course, and again, this I know a lot of Think customers and prospects are really excited about hosted SMS. And you mentioned earlier, it's you know being able to send messages, you know, to you know plain old telephone numbers uh, without affecting the voice service, right? Correct. Yeah. So again, there's a lot of applications out there, and as much as we would love you to bring all of your DID business and port everything over to our network, we would love that. Um, we understand that sometimes that that could be hard to do. And, um, but if you need to enable those, those numbers for a messaging platform, that's just one of the things that we can do. Great. So. Absolutely. All right. So, uh, and last but not least, I know we, we there was also some interest. I know you guys can also power, you know, E911 with, with alerts, right? Which is something else that a lot of people have not heard of potentially before. Correct. Yeah. And so some of the things we do is the hosted 911 as well. So you can register your 911 with us, even though the number might not sit on our network. Mm -hmm. And some applications on things like this are, say you have a nursing home or you have an elderly parent or or any of those things, or you run a school and you're a supervisor at a school and you want to say, hey, I want to know when 911 is being dialed. It could be in any application. You can own a business, right? And say, hey, someone at the business at this terminal dialed 911. Let me know who it is. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a, a you know, it, it gives the ability to allow a family member, work associates to be in that immediate communication, almost as the first responders are that, hey, something's going on. Mm-hmm. So a really powerful tool can be used in, in a lot of different applications. Excellent. Well, with that, definitely want to open it up to uh, questions. I know it looks like a couple of them did come in while we were talking, which is fantastic. Um, So let's see, Mark was asking if a client has a phone number with another provider, you're saying that we can text enable the number without them, um, you know, giving it to us. I think the answer is yes, obviously, right? Correct. Yeah, that is the answer. Yeah, we can. Like Scott said, sometimes it takes an LOA. To uh, to get that done, 
The only thing that I would probably add to that, um, I think everybody here is experienced with, with port number portability, right? So um, it's just assuming that we support the underlying rate center. So uh, as long as we can support the rate center, then absolutely we can do that. Gotcha. I had another question here uh, from Jeff is asking about, uh, you know, you mentioned there were some, obviously some fees around short code because he's new to short codes. Can you give us an idea of what the, some of the costs are for that? Sure. So typically there's, you know, a setup fee with short codes. Uh, roughly it, it could cost about a $3,000 setup fee. Um, that's just, you know, to enable everything with the, uh, with the mobile operators. And then there's a random short code that we typically charge about, you know, it's five, it's a $500 pass through fee. And if it's a vanity, so if you go in there and say, Hey, I want a vanity number to spell something out or whatever it is, then that's a thousand dollars a month. Gotcha. That's great. Uh, so recommend anybody else who has questions, definitely use that Q and a, uh, Q and a box. We're happy to answer any questions you have. Um, I feel like you guys did a fantastic job covering the basics of all the, all the different, you know, types of, of messaging that we can enable and power. And it's, you know, the, the flexibility, you know, is amazing, you know, depending on the use case, looks like there's lots of different ways to, to, to tackle it. Right. And it, I, I would just add, you know, we, we go pretty deep on our, on the, on, you know, the gateway side, there's not a lot of businesses out there that have these relationships with the mobile operators. And we have relationships with all the companies that have those direct uh, connections with the mobile operators currently. And so it gives us that maneuverability again as well to uh, do things specifically for the customer's needs. Fantastic. Well, I was gonna say with that, it looks like uh, we answered, answered the questions. The content was great. Um, just as a reminder, you know, this, this session has been recorded. I'll be, uh, be uh, turning it into a video and sharing it with everybody who couldn't attend. Uh, but looks like we had a really good turnout and, I, and uh, I encourage you, if you have any other questions, respond to the email that you'll receive uh, later this afternoon or early tomorrow morning. With any questions you have about messaging, I'll make sure both Brian and Scott, you know, get those and we can respond in real time. And I think really at the end of the day, um, we'd love to have a deeper conversation with you. It sounds like a lot of you are, um, are obviously already doing uh, messaging um, potentially, you know, not with us, but we'd love to, you know, take a look at your use case and see if there might be a better fit, not only for more flexibility, more throughput, but also cost savings potentially. It all depends on what you're doing, the volumes, and, you know, we can see if there might be a great fit. And, um, you know, one of the things that, that both of the companies, you know, one of the reasons we're coming together is because we both provide fantastic support. We have a large US-based support team that can, you know, help you through not only installation, but running the products. And, uh, you know, when, when and if you encounter any issues, we're here. Uh, we actually pick up our phones, right? We answer our emails and we can support you because we know that, uh, you know, that is a differentiator in this industry. We want to make sure that continues and it will. So uh, with that, Brian and Scott, thank you for your time today. Thank really you. appreciate thank it. Thank you, Tim. Thanks everyone thank for joining. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, and guys. We'll, we'll be in did touch we, Did we get it? All right. <laughs> yeah, Sounds good. I thought, we, I thought we had another question coming, but it, it was just... uh, no, Actually, hold on. Maybe, let's see. You're right. Somebody just popped in. Let's see. Oh, Doug and Matt and Patrick were just saying thank you. There you go. So right. thank you, guys. Thanks, thank guys. You.